Yep, okay. All right, so we're on. Uh, the Lord's Prayer. So my interpretation of the Lord's, Lord's Prayer today. So our Father who art in heaven. So the Lord's Prayer is a prayer for someone who's in duality. So it's not, it wouldn't be uh, if, if one is in the oneness or in the infinite or in the eternal. Like it, it says, be still and know that I am God. So in the stillness, but if you're identified with ego, then our Father who art in heaven, so the, the, heaven, the heavenly, you're not in the heavenly place. So the Father's kingdom is in heaven and you're not there. So our Father who art in heaven. So I'm in duality to be saying our Father in heaven because you wouldn't say that if you were out of ego. So I have to try and remember the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I think this is, you know, this is something, hallowed be thy name, this is something about humility for the ego. I mean, the ego is very, is very grandiose and thinks it is the centre of the planet. So, it's like, uh, hallowed be thy name. It's just like to acknowledge that divinity is, some, is, is at a higher level of consciousness, shall we say, than the ego's limited experience of identified consciousness. So, our Father, hallowed, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done. So your kingdom come, your will be done. So in order for the non-dual to come, and that, uh, so they go together, your kingdom come, so please may reveal to me the non-dual reality, the non-dual truth, thy will be done. So the problem with being in a dualistic, in, in a dualistic place, i.e. ego identified place, is that you're believing that you have a will separate from the infinite. So you have an independent will, like God, um, it shouldn't rain today. That's my will. But, you know, like we say often, like, thy will be done, whether it rains or not, that's, quite, you know, that is the will. If you don't make any thoughts, of, or uh, you don't make any what's called, uh, the thoughts are label, labelings, yeah, label thoughts. So it should be this way or it shouldn't be this way, or I'm important or I'm not important. So there's no labels on there. So, uh, so, our Father who art in heaven, help be the name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So for me, on earth as it is in heaven. So we're really we're asking the non-dual to be present in, while there's still identification in this realm. So, our Father who art in heaven, help be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. So, this is the thing of if you let go of my will, if I let go of my will, and I no longer identify, <laughs> I no longer identify with um, with the separate thoughts. Then, uh, uh, our Father will turn out. Give us each day our daily bread. Yeah. So once you're in the non-dual place, and I, I share often with the with the guy who's in the room today, it's like when you go to the non-dual places or the non-dual flow, it's like you know, the ego is no longer making a sub-talk of what's going on. There's just infinite presence all through the day and the day flows by and, and it's timeless and, it, and, it, and it's thoughtless. And yet, you know, everything is taken care of. You know, there, there's, there's no thoughts of where am I going to get my, am I going to go to McDonald's in 10 minutes time or what I'm going to eat. Everything is provided for and everything happens thoughtlessly and there was no need. So, uh, uh, so our Father who art in heaven, hath been the name. The kingdom come, you will be done, on earth is in heaven. Give us each day a daily bread. So that the bread for daily existence actually comes from the infinite. It's not you in your head trying to work out where the bread's coming from. That is provided, you know, automatically from, uh, by grace. It doesn't require the head to sort of be in thinking to provide the bread. So give us each day a daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, or forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So that, I think that, that's really, that's almost an anti-karma prayer, that one. Uh, forgive us our trespasses. So the core thing of the ego is like it likes to blame everyone and be in victimhood. Like the reason, um, the, reason, uh, the reason I got my bank account shut down was it's the bank's fault. You know, uh, it's not. My, it's not that I've got. It's not my fault. 
So that blame thing. So, um, so it's the thing of like, you know, if I want to be forgiven, i.e. to return to the non-dual, empty, innocent, sinless place, then I can't perceive sin in anyone else or myself. So I have to let go, like, there is no such thing as sin or, uh, or unforgiveness that doesn't exist any longer. So forgive us our sins or forgive us our trespasses and forgive those who trespass us. So in that place, if all trespasses are forgiven in this world to self and others, then there is, there is nothing to forgive. In the place of nothing to forgive, there is no thought because the ego goes silent. Because, it, I mean, the ego, like, who's, who can I blame? Can I blame myself? Can I blame you? Can I blame God? So that falls silent. And so the ego, it's like making the ego's job redundant. It doesn't have anything to talk about or control or hold resentments against anything or anyone. So forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our trespasses, and lead us not into temptation. Well, the temptation is really identification with form. Lead us not into identifying with form, is what I'd say. Do not identify with thoughts, do not identify with bodies, do not identify with feelings, do not identify with time, do not identify with location. That is, as soon as there's identification with form, one has dropped into dualism. You know, and then they're suffering because it's not effortless. The identification is effort, and non-identification is effortless. So lead us not into temptation, and deliver us. I mean, to identify is to become subject to all the limiting ideas of the collective consciousness. So as soon as I lead us not into temptation, as soon as I identify, I'm limited. I am this body and these stories. There's a whole raft of collective belief systems that I'm now subject to. Oh, you don't like me? Well, I don't like you. You know, it's all this kind of limiting beliefs that I've been subscribed to. A lot of this automatically happens. It's like, uh, it very much is like a computer thing. As soon as you, you, you identify, you're, you're plugging into the collective illusions of that, of that being at that level of consciousness. So, what, however strongly you identify, to that extent, um, you're subject to the collective illusions based at that level of consciousness. So lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Yeah, so if I'm in God's kingdom forever and ever, amen, and God's power, well, that's the end of the story, isn't it, really? Uh, you know, that's, uh, oh, that's my interpretation.